Yep, there it is, Zach Welton staying in at quarterback, and they just keep the ball in his hands. A little quarterback keeper there. Quarterback uh, runs the ball up the middle and uh, a nice pickup on first down. That's what you want to see. You'd like to see the Cougars get a couple first downs here. Not necessarily put any points on the board, but just get some momentum back on their side, let their defense catch a breath on the, on the sidelines and uh, move the ball a little bit. Welton back to pass once again, trying to find somebody open on the right side, and that goes well over top of the head of Cody St. Pierre. And out of bounds, so not a whole lot to do on that series for the Cougars. Under six minutes left to go in this third quarter and a 28-3 lead, so the punting unit back on the field. And that's another two and out for the defense from Forest City, so they've done their job so far in the second half. They haven't allowed the Cougars to move the ball, haven't allowed them to get a first down. Cougars going to have to punt the ball away again here. Now, you want your special teams to come up big and pin Forest City deep. Now, Forest City, we've seen them. They have fumbled a punt return so far, and uh, the Cougars' coverage has been good. So uh, it's been a good job so far from the special teams for the Cougars, and uh, obviously it helps when you have somebody putting a boot to it like, uh, like uh, Clark here who's going to uh, kick this one away. Mr. Green gets the football, gets it up in the air, and it comes down around the 20-yard line of Forest City. And it's not going to get too much farther than that. About the 25-yard line is where the ball will come down and will be for the Forest City Thunderbirds when they begin this series. So looks like the defense for Chatham-Kent did what they had to. Yeah, that was a good job there. A good kick from Clark Green. A nice coverage from, uh, from the special teams getting down there. Uh, maybe a gain of about five yards on the return. So not much there. A good job. That's what you like to see. That's what you practice. And uh, you like to see it come through. And it's an important time in the game. It's uh, you, you don't want... For City to gain any momentum at all in any phase of the game, including special teams, and uh, the special teams for the Cougars did their job right there. First and ten, For City back with the ball possession. Now back to pass, and now trying to find some room to run once again. He's doing that quite a bit here in this second half. He does find a little room up the middle. Quarterback Yazid Sinan doing more running than throwing, it appears, in this third quarter, but by and large, it's working for him. Yeah, it is. Uh, that was a good job that time by Connor Martin, the defensive end. Uh, Sinan was looking to get out of the pocket, and he wanted to scramble to his right, toward that right sideline. But what Connor Martin did, number 50, the defensive end for the Cougars, he got upfield, and that shut off the lane for Sinan to get outside. So he had to, to run up the middle, and that's where the Cougars really have a lot of beef up there. And uh, it made a tough sledding for Sinan. He only gained three yards on that play. Second and seven, kind of a low snap. Seaton digs it out and a pass complete along that far sideline. No, actually, I think or they're going to say out he dropped bounds? it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, went, it, it did look like he was going to grab it. It's it's a little bit tough on that far side of the field too, with the lights uh, on that side and the, uh, the darkness patch. coming in. So with 4:19 left to go, third and seven will be the situation here for the Forest City Thunderbirds, with time slowly running down. Do they go for it here? Yeah, this is this is not an area where you would expect 4C to go for it. They're they're too deep in their own end, really. Uh, you know about their 27 yard line. Uh, you want to punt this way. The Cougars, their defense did their job there. Two plays and then force a punt. This way you can eat at the clock a little bit more. Plus you're gaining some field position here. So you'd like to see a decent return. I wouldn't expect Forest City to kick this ball to the right side of the field. That's where Graham Smith is right now. You'd expect that ball to. Uh, to go to number 34 for the Cougars, Blaine Bayshard, because uh, Forest City should have learned by now that Smith is uh, is a dangerous return man, and we've seen that uh, a couple times already. They've kicked the ball away from Graham Smith. Uh, if you're just joining us, Graham Smith has a punt return for a touchdown. He also has an interception return for a touchdown in this game. It's no fluke. No, it's it's not. He's talented <laughs> uh, in the, the opening game of the season. Uh, as we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, he had a 74-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. It was actually the opening kickoff of the season last weekend that he returned for a touchdown. So a nice way to start the season, and uh, he hasn't slowed down at all here tonight. Forest City back to punt it. Another high snap, 
And still with lots of time to punt it away. Thunderbirds will get it as far as the 45 of the Cougars, and now they run it back with some gusto up to the 50-yard line. And doing a good job there. Looked like Graham Smith doing that, uh, doing what he does best along yeah. the far side. Yeah, surprisingly, they uh, they kicked it to Graham Smith. The kicker really uh, had a lot of time to uh, pull in that, as you mentioned, the high snap. I think he took about six or seven steps before he actually kicked it away. Usually you don't have that kind of time, but uh, didn't look like the Cougars were really rushing the kicker all that much, so he took advantage of it. So uh, now the Cougars back out on offense, and you can expect that they're going to try to eat up some clock here and maybe wait till the fourth quarter till they bring in some more backups. Now Welton with the pass. He's got a receiver open, and a receiver. That brings down a first down, a reception for Cody St. Pierre, who got wide open. He was able to use his speed to put some space between him and some defensive backs, but a flag is on the field right now. And I think this is going to go uh, after the catch. This is a penalty after the catch. St. Pierre made the catch, and a, a nice throw and catch from uh, Bolton to St. Pierre. And St. Pierre was out of bounds when he got thrown down to the ground. He was pretty clearly out of bounds, so uh, that's going to be uh, an illegal hit after the catch. And that's going to pay dividends in another 15 yards. But a nice throw and catch. They start at the 51-yard line. The catch was made at the 24-yard line. And then you can tack, off, tack on another 15 for the penalty. So really a, a huge play for the Cougars' offense here. Big reception for St. Pierre. He's quietly putting together a pretty decent night, as are a lot of offensive players and defensive players for the Chatham Kent Cougars. Yeah, certainly are. It's, uh, it's been a nice game for the Cougars so far. Now a running play and not getting too far was William St. Dennis getting some action. Come on, guys, fly! Second down, and I don't know if he got any yardage at all in that last play, so second and 10 might be the, the call here with three minutes to go in the third quarter. And we talked about how, how big that last play was. Uh, the passing play resulted in a gain of about 27 yards, but then you tack on another 15 yards on top of that for that penalty, and uh, you're talking first and goal now for the Cougars from the uh, nine yard line. Weldon gets the snap. He looks to pass to the end zone oh. and intercepted by Forest City in the end zone. And I believe just getting out of the end zone, from this angle anyway, he got out of the end zone just barely for Forest City. So instead of getting three points or seven points, the offense comes away with nada. However, the only good part of that was for City getting the football very, very deep in their own zone. Yeah, that's a shame for the Cougars. That's not what you want to see happen. Looked like it was Trevor Fries that came up with the pick, but if you're the coaching staff, you want to make sure you make it clear to uh, Zach Welton that that's, you know, if, if it's not there, don't force it. And, uh, well, unfortunately, there was an errant throw. It looked like he had a receiver in the area that was open, but uh, just couldn't find him and throws the pick. And that's uh, that's something that you, you definitely don't want to see, no matter what the score is uh, whenever you have a chance to put points on the board, you want to make sure you do that. Ball appears to be at the one yard line, so maybe a big assignment here for the Cougars defense to put some big time pressure on the quarterback and maybe grab a safety here. And a penalty right away, penalty flag is down. Just getting out of the end zone. Were the Forest City Thunderbirds there with over two minutes left to go? We'll see what the call is right yeah. off the snap. Yeah, Seenan showing his speed, able to get out of bounds and uh, get out of the end zone. And you're right, there was a flag right off the bat. If, now, if it's a holding call in the end zone, we'll have to see here what the call is. No, it's an illegal procedure call against, against Forest City. So the referee's just explaining to the Cougars their options here. So it looks like I think well, they're it's gonna, so close to the line, uh, right. to the end zone. What what happens there? Well, it, it looks like what happens is that you split the distance. So you do, you do half the distance to the goal. So half the half so yard half, line, basically. So basically, yeah. if you're a yard out, you go the the half yard. Or if you decline it, then then you can allow him to stay where he was. So, so the Cougars decline the penalty. And then it brings a second down. Because really, if you accept the penalty, you're only really penalizing them a half yard and you're giving them a free down again because right. they get to replay the first down. Now you're declining the penalty and they still have to pick up nine yards and they only get one down to do it. 
Trying to get out of the oh, end zone. Oh, I don't know fumble. that he did it. And, the, and as the ball is jarred loose, let's see who comes up with the football. And from this angle, it looks to be in the end zone. Yeah, that was close. It, it almost looked like he was dragged down the end zone. He might have just reached across that line. We'll have to see. The ball has to be also to... Oh, yeah. a safety. They're going to say... A so safety. He was tackled in the end zone and the ball... I, I don't think they're saying either the ball didn't come loose or he maintained possession, but he was tackled in the in the end zone. So two more points for the Chatham-Kent Cougars as this game continues to roll in their favor. 30-3, to three, the Cougars have the lead on the Thunderbirds. We just can't seem to get it going tonight. No, good job by the Cougars. And right there, that's that's got to make the coaches feel a lot better at this point. You're now up 30-3. to three. Your defense does a great job there, pinning them back, getting the two points from the safety. And then you also regain possession of the football. This is an opportunity where I would think you would look at bringing Ryan Brook back into the game, the quarterback, backup quarterback for the Cougars, and start to sprinkle in some of your backups, get some time. What a great job by Zach Welton tonight under center. He had a very good game at quarterback and, well, Score shows at 30-3. to three. Yeah, really. And you know what? Uh, all phases of the game so far, they, they had a field goal from uh, Clark Green early in this game to get things started. So your special teams have come through because you, not only did you get the field goal, but, well, actually you've got two field goals from Clark Green, but you've also got the punt return for a touchdown from Grant Smith. And then the defense put some points on the board when Graham Smith had the interception return for a touchdown. So really all phases have come through for you. The defense now adding again another two points to their belt with that safety. So the defense has scored you some points. You've got points on special teams. You've got points on offense. Uh, all three phases of the game, you've got to be happy if you're a coach for the Cougars. And Cougars getting the football back, kicked away, and back to retrieve it. All of a sudden, the ball hits a dead zone. Josh Wright, very, very dangerous, and he is pushed just out of bounds at around the 36-yard line of his own territory. That's a, that's a confident young man. Whenever he touches the football, he just, he just goes. He knows that something good is going to happen. Yeah, Josh Wright has, uh, has certainly looked good uh, returning kicks tonight. He's had a couple uh, tonight where he, uh, he really looked like he might go all the way. And uh, so and another weapon that you've got, you put, you put him back there with uh, Graham Smith, and you've got a, a dangerous duo. Time ticking down in this third quarter. Still a minute 45 to go and a 27-point lead for the Cougars in their home opener against the visitors from London, the Forest City Thunderbirds. Back for Welton. He elects to hand it off. Running back getting maybe a yard. Defense for Forest City not backing down and that run for Chris Verrill, who we haven't uh, really called very much tonight. Yeah, nice job there by Peter Morales, the uh, linebacker for Forest City. Got penetration as soon as Verrill got the ball. Morales was there waiting for him and uh, made the tackle. So some tough sledding for uh, Chris Verrill tonight. Um, really Blaine Bashard and uh, Mitch Rate have been uh, pretty effective tonight running the ball. It's been, uh, it's been some tough sledding for Chris Verrill so far tonight. Second down and 10 to go and Welton. He likes to keep the football and run it himself. He gets maybe three yards on that run off to the left-hand side. So that's going to set up third down and seven as we're under a minute to go here in this third quarter. And it kind of looks like the uh, Cougars just pretty happy to let the clock run down as best they can with a 27-point lead. It is a high kick. It comes down around the 40, and a penalty marker is down. And the Cougars still have it deep into London territory. Beautiful night at the stadium. Thunderbirds now with the ball and a lot of pressure for the Thunderbirds to deal with. As we mentioned, they turned the ball over a couple times. So we got a big punt here. And on third down, will they get the first down? Looks like they do. 